Genuine Parts Company has 53,000 employees worldwide. Primarily, we have two lines of business, aftermarket automotive replacement parts and industrial aftermarket replacement parts. We're a Fortune 200 company doing about $20 billion of revenue a year. Some of the biggest security challenges we face today is really around attack surface management. GPC has over 900 websites protected by Cloudflare today globally. Our busiest website gets approximately two and a half billion requests a month. It is hit by approximately 57 million threats each and every month. And each and every month, Cloudflare protects against all 57 million. Cloudflare and the Security Insights technology is allowing me to see what's happening across all of our digital footprint. We did have a competitor product, but we were in the dark. There's a peace of mind that we can say we have the visibility and we know, but then to be able to say we can tell you 450 million threats were thwarted by Cloudflare, each and every one of those could have been a really, really bad day. In selecting Cloudflare, we selected them with the knowledge that they had multiple areas that we could expand into. So the more that we can put with a single provider, the more we can centralize and orchestrate. I don't have to go to four different places places to get an idea of zero trust versus what's going on with my apps versus what's going on with my APIs. The consolidation is real. The strategy is real. We're executing on it. I'm not necessarily interested in working with a vendor where that's all they're trying to sell me, where I only ever hear from them on a renewal. What I need are people to help me solve problems. And Cloudflare has been there along the way to help us solve our web problems. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to Cloudflare, to one of the Cloudflare webinar. My name is Daniele Molteni. I'm a part of the application security group, and I lead the web application firewall from my product side. And with me, there is Humer, who leads the technical marketing for application security. Today, we are going to focus on, on web application firewall, and specifically on a few new features we launched in the last few months. I've prepared some slides so we can go over what they were the, the highlights for uh, for 2023, and then uh, after I finish my slides, Homer is gonna uh, walk us through the dashboard. We'll showcase the new features, and in general, we'll introduce um, the the Cloudflare WAF uh, to everybody. Uh, at the end of the presentation and at the end of the, the demo, we will leave some time for questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q and A uh, bar. Uh, in, uh, in in the screen, and then we will go through through them and address uh, your uh, uh, questions and concerns. Um, great. Okay, so let me jump in with the um, first um, kind of like just wanted to set the scene with some of the numbers and trends we see in the, in the traffic. So uh, Cloudflare is a as uh, a privileged position because we are able to process a huge amount of traffic every day, every second. So about 70, 80 million requests per second is what we proxy um, uh, basically every day throughout the year. So this gives a, a unique um, opportunity to identify trends and, and, and attacks as they arise and as they change over time. So this, uh, these are a few uh, of the key um, uh, trends we have seen uh, over the last years. Uh, there are a couple of numbers I want to call out. So the first one is the 8%, uh, the one on the top left you see on the screen. So this is the uh, share of requests that we mitigate. So across all HTTP traffic, again, we proxy about 78 million requests per second, 8% of those requests get mitigated by WAF. So it's almost one out of 10 requests is considered malicious or we should basically take an action on that specific request. It's a pretty sizable number. Um, another very interesting data point is that 12% uh, of those requests are still relevant to specific vulner software vulnerabilities, so CVEs essentially. So those are, are, are um, zero days or specific vulnerabilities that are present in, in commonly used um, software uh, solutions, software packages, and this is for what the WAF is designed originally, right? So it's designed to protect and to block those vulnerabilities early on. 
So this is still one of the main attack vectors to, uh, to applications. The other uh, big chunk of those 80% 80, 80 of requests um, is due to HTTP anomalies. So think about headers that are malformed or, or part of the request, they, they don't look right, but perhaps they're not um, immediately obvious that it's an attack. While when it comes to CVs, of course, we are sure that this is actually something we need to block or manage. Um, another interesting data point is that 55% of all traffic is API. So we have all heard about the importance of API. API is growing in terms of like the, 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 the technology basically used by uh, applications. Um, and so most of the products we have uh, as part of WAF can be used for API, but we have also invested a lot in API specific uh, security feature. We have uh, a product line which is called API Shield and API Gateway. So if you are interested in any API security tools, that's also something uh, you, you may want to look into. Okay, so let me jump into uh, the features and what makes the, the Cloudflare WAF special. So this is just a brief overview of, of the WAF. So I trust many of you are already familiar with Cloudflare WAF, but some of you might be new and might just uh, approach the, our WAF for the first time. So just to give you a sense of what we offer. So the, the, the WAF has, a, has a, a set of tools to protect against attacks at layer seven. You can start from DDoS attack. Of course, this comes out of the box as soon as you you uh, or you get behind Cloudflare. Then the WAF includes a new machine learning, artificial intelligence WAF designed to protect against uh, attacks. And I'll tell you more about that in a second. And then we have the traditional rules like custom rules, um, which is where you can write the logic. We have uh, rate limiting, which has additional controls for specifically designed for API traffic. Manage rules is where our signatures come, come into play. Uh, we have a new product called Content Scanning. We're going to also touch upon it. It's basically a malware detection uh, solution. And then finally, we have um, Exposed Credential Check, which is a, a, a product designed to identify when exposed credential or compromised credential are being used by a client. And finally, sensitive data detection is a WAF deployed on the response phase. So we look for uh, uh, data exfiltration, a pattern of sensitive data being returned to the client. And of course, the Cloudflare WAF can be deployed in front of any type of infrastructure, whether it's on-prem on or completely in cloud or, or hybrid. Um, how to think about Cloudflare uh, WAF and the way we always think about when we create new features is uh, as three main, uh, main uh, um, values, if you want. The first one is that we are moving to uh, um, uh, an architecture where the visibility and the, the, the mitigation are not mutually exclusive. Usually with, with a firewall, with a WAF, um, sometimes you get either the visibility component, so when you deploy the signatures in log, or you get the mitigation component when you deploy those signatures in block. Um, we believe this is uh, actually not the right way to approach the problem, and so we want to provide both visibility and ability to mitigate, which are independent. So you can still get the visibility even if you decide to, to deploy some rules. And you'll see what we mean uh, through the demo and also in the slides. Of course, we're investing a lot in machine learning and um, adding an additional layer to a signature base WAF. And, and finally, everything we build um, is designed to be very simple to deploy and to manage to our dashboard. And you will appreciate that uh, during the, the demo that Homer is gonna um, is gonna is gonna show. Okay, so recent releases. So one of the big features we launched in, in uh, uh, last year and uh, even before that is the security analytics. So this is a single pane of glass where you can see all your traffic, whether it was mitigated or was served by your your origin, or was actually served by our cache. So you'll be able to dig uh, uh, deep into each request, identify patterns and trends. And this is what I mean by offering visibility. So we show everything, whether it was mitigated or not. And you also see the signals that were added by our WAF. So whether a request had something malicious and perhaps it wasn't mitigated, um, or whether the request was automated perhaps, and we applied uh, some rules. You'll be able to dig deeper into any of those um, those dimension of the request. 
And you'll see here at the bottom there are three different panels. Those are the detection modules. So these are basically the signal you can access. Um, one is the attack score. I'm going to tell you in a second what's that. And then you have the bot score, which is, of course, the, um, the, uh, the indication of how likely is that a request is automated, is generated by a, by a bot. <clears throat> and the third one is the uh, content upload scanning, which is a, a, an antivirus, inline antivirus. And of course, we're investing more and adding more capabilities and more um, signals that you will be able to use in the analytics. Um, OK, the attack score is our new uh, machine learning uh, WAF. Is essentially an additional layer of protection that you can deploy on top of the signature-based rules, the traditional signatures that we all uh, have been using for the, for the last years. Um, the way we built this solution is by training a um, machine learning system, an AI system, uh, is training it with a data, attack data that we have identified on our network. Again, because we block so much traffic, we have an endless supply of training data sets, which is all the attacks we block. And so we can use this, uh, this, uh, uh, this request to train a model to identify attacks. And it proves to be extremely effective for what well, bypasses or new attacks that perhaps you even have seen before were not made public before. Um, and this is an example of uh, why we've found that this is successful. So those are four CVs, the one in the table are four CVs that have been released in uh, June uh, this year. Um, and they were all considered high or critical impact so at the time of the uh, announcement of the announcement of the, the new vulnerability, we didn't have a rule in place. We didn't have a signature written for it because, of course, it was unknown yet to the community. Um, but of course, as soon as they came out, we created a rule to protect our customers. But we also what we did is to look back at what our machine learning uh, model was uh, was uh, thinking about those type of attacks. Did uh, was it able to detect them even before we created the, the signature and the rule? And the answer is yes. So for all four of them, if you had that product deployed, you could have already had the protection in place. So we would have, we would have blocked the attack even before it was made public. And so this type of solution is extremely useful to prevent new attacks, but also is extremely is more flexible than signature-based rule because it can adapt and can identify bypasses. Often one of the problem with attacks is that attackers try to, to tweak the, the, the payload, the malicious payload to bypass the, the craft, um, the, the, the signature that's been crafted to be uh, extremely specific. So having a machine learning on top of that will help alleviate the bypassing problem. Um, so one other feature we launched that I mentioned uh, at the beginning is the new content scanning uh, solution. This is basically an inline antivirus or malware detection um, solution that identifies when a file is being uploaded and also runs the, uh, the scanner in line with the request. So we identify the file, we check whether there is a malware in the file, and then we add that information to the request. You can then create a rule and decide what you want to do with, with that information. At the moment, the maximum size of the fi of file we can scan is one megabyte, but we will soon extend it to 15 megabyte. And uh, beyond, it will probably go beyond that in, the, um, in future quarters. We scan all type of files. So we essentially exclude anything that is HTML or JSON or text. And then anything else, we scan it and we run it through the uh, to the malware detection. Um, if you have a specific payload also where you um, add the file in a specific field, a JSON field, for example, you can also tell us where the file is uh, located, and then we're gonna we're gonna look for the file in that in that location and scan it. Um, so, so in, if you, in, in your application you are accepting any type of files, whether are, are documents or PDFs, this can be a, a very important uh, feature you can add to your to your WAF and to, to um, your security posture. 
Rate limiting is an important component of WAF. So we use rate limiting all the time to protect um, uh, login pages or APIs. Um, but one of the challenges our customers have always talked about is how you can estimate the rate of request you want to allow and what's, what's the rate of request that should be considered malicious or we should block. Um, until today, the only solution was to deploy a rule in log mode and then look at the data, the past data, or look at your SIM, all your data, the past data, and identify what, what's a reasonable rate of request. That doesn't really scale and is very a cumbersome process to get to an answer. So we built directly into the security analytics a tool that helps identifying the rate of request. You should create a rule. Um, so this is an example you see, we order IPs based on their rate of request in a descending order. So the one at the left, actually each column is a single IP and the height of the column is their rate of request. So you see on the left, there is a cluster of columns which are very high bars, high bars. Those identify probably automated um, uh, clients that are hitting our endpoint at a higher than average rate. So by looking at the distribution, essentially, you can decide where you should put the, the limit, the threshold, and then from there, you can automatically create a rule and deploy it. This is especially useful if you're protecting, let's say, a login endpoint, and you expect users or clients coming from corporate networks or NATs, where a single IP might have multiple um, uh, users behind. So you can identify those, those networks. Um, one additional feature for rate limiting is uh, the throttle behavior. So until today, we um, had one uh, behavior when we wanted to block uh, a specific IP, which was a, 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 um, a continuous block. So let's say you were setting a rule at 10 requests per minute. Um, if you were exceeding 10 requests per minute, then you would have blocked that specific IP, specific client for a period of time that you could have set, but let's say you could block the, the, for 10 minutes, right? So the penalty was a, um, a continuous penalty. And again, if you were expecting clients from corporate networks, this was a very extremely um, a severe penalty, right? So you, you could run the risk of blocking everybody behind that IP just because one client was misbehaving. So we're now introducing throttling action um, and this is um, uh, like a leaky bucket implementation, right? So you define the rate of request you want to maintain, and then we selectively drop requests that exceed this rate of request uh, over time. So if you only accept 10 requests per minute, then we will only drop selective requests, a few requests to make sure that in the last 10 minutes, you only accepted 10 requests. So you don't have you don't run the risk of over penalizing certain IPs. Um, one additional feature we recently launched is uh, uh, new list types. So if you're familiar with the Cloudflare WAF, we offer um, some tools to help you create and maintain custom rules. So rules you manage, uh, and one of those tools is IP list. So you create a, um, a list including your IPs that you want to block or perhaps you want to allow to access your application, and you can reuse that list everywhere on the WAF. Um, until today, we only supported IPs. Um, we are now uh, supporting also ASN and host names. So you can create rules um, that refer to a list of host names, perhaps your production host or your staging uh, um, uh, applications, and you can only scope those rules to the specific uh, group of, um, of hosts. Um, ASN is also very useful, especially if you want to manage traffic from, let's say, um, cloud providers or data centers, because of course IP rotate, so it's very hard to pin down or to to restrict a rule to a specific cloud providers, for example. But if you create a list of ASNs, that becomes much more easy, and they're of course more predictable and stable. Uh, that's it for the recent releases. Uh, I wanted just to call out one feature we're working on, just to give you a sneak peek to what's coming up next year. Um, again, as I mentioned, we are investing a lot in the analytics and in the ability to provide signals 
and, and tag request even before you, you perform an action. And um, along th that philosophy, we're also creating the exposed credential check um, product. We are, we are planning to run it always on and on every request. Again, as a reminder, exposed credential check, what it does, it identifies when a password or username is being used by the client and it runs a check on a database of exposed credential or a database of a collection of credential that we know have been leaked in the past. And whenever there is a match, we add a header to the request so the, the origin can perform uh, um, specific actions. Um, again, today we have that product, but you can only deploy it in a rule set form. So you, do, you have to deploy the rule, so you lose that visibility component. In the next year, we're going to release this as a module, a detection module. So anytime the request shows um, a password and a username, we run the detection and we add, we enrich the request with information on whether the credentials were, were exposed or not. And then you will be able to create a rule and manage that request as you see fit. So if you're interested in this, um, stay tuned. We will let you know more in, in 2024. And with that, I think uh, I have um, shared all the updates and uh, the slides. So I'll pass it on to Homer for, for the demo. OK, thank you. Then I'll, let me go ahead and <clears throat> share my screen here. OK. All right. Okay. Uh, thanks for that uh, great intro and uh, presentation, uh, Daniela. Um, so as Daniela showed, we have a lot of innovations over the past year and the uh, last few months. I'm going to start here with security analytics that brings together all our uh, security uh, detection capabilities in one place to show a detailed understanding of all of the site's traffics and threats. Now, I have a lot of traffic running periodically in the background for demo purposes. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I also have an app I wrote in Python where I'm also going to just generate some attack traffic uh, here live uh, and also attempt to upload some malicious files. And this will just ensure we have varied uh, attack traffic data within our demo and our analytics. So I'm going to run some um, SQL injection attacks here, some remote code execution attacks, some cross-site scripting attacks, and then we'll also try to upload malicious files um, a few times. And each of these are kind of looping through the attacks, you know, a, a few times. So we should be able to see that. And I'm also running uh, automated traffic in the background with other attacks as well. So that should give us enough data. Let me go ahead and uh, and I'll just refresh this here. We'll go to our security analytics and we'll start off here. So the analytics tab here uh, really differs from the events tab, which shows all the uh, which shows all the events the WAF took action on, such as like uh, logging, blocking, challenges, and show, so on. That's the events tab. Now the analytics tab, I'm gonna come down here and just uh, give us a little bit more data. So I'll say previous 30 days here. The analytics tab provides more visibility to help guide customers through locking down their security posture. And the data shown here is across all HTTP traffic, regardless of if any mitigation is deployed. So you can see here, we provide a time lap lapse for uh, traffic patterns and analysis and a breakdown of mitigated versus non-mitigated traffic. And the non-mitigated traffic is broken down into served by Cloudflare and then serve by origin. Customers can also swap the graph here to attack analysis, bot analysis, or rate limit analysis. Now, attack analysis, I'll cover in a minute here. I'll come back to this. Let me jump to bot analysis for a second. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and just exclude one of these IPs here to give us some more variation. Now, Bot analysis shows the classification of traffic based on different bot detection mechanisms, uh, which basically establish a bot score. Uh, and based on that bot score, um, 
we can also then use this in the WAF policies. The bot score is given to every request. And then based on that uh, bot score, Cloudflare is able to say, hey, is this traffic human? Is it likely human? Is it automated or is it likely automated? And then we also maintain a known good bots list or verified bots, okay? And then we also have this rate limit analysis, which displays data on request rate for traffic matching the selected filter and time period as, as Daniela, co Daniela covered. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down and I'm just gonna say group by top IP address and J3 fingerprints from the drop down, And uh, you can s select the rate defined on different time intervals as well. Uh, one minute, five minutes, you can go to one hour and the attribute of the request used to identify the rate. I've already selected here IP address and J3 fingerprint, or you can do a combination of uh, both of these, the IP address and the fingerprint. And then once the attributes are selected, the chart here basically displays the distribution of request rates for the top 50 unique clients identified here as unique IPs or uh, the fingerprints. And this is observed during that chosen uh, time interval in uh, descending order. Now here, what's cool is you can easily create the rate limiting rule by clicking this link. And then the relevant information is pre-populated and you can choose an action for the specific, specified uh, duration um, of time, like once that rate is exceeded. And now more recently, what we added is you can also throttle requests over the maximum configured rate. This is kind of like a sliding window effect or what is often referred to as leaking bucket. So as time passes, the average rate might drop, making room for more requests, okay? Now, uh, since we're on rate limiting real quick, I, I wanna mention one other thing here. With our rate limiting, we also have a lot of cross product integration. For example, here under API Gateway, for API security and management, Cloudflare gives us a recommended rate limit here for all our API endpoints. And this is for helping prevent volumetric abuse. Simply by clicking one link here that says create link, all the relevant data is pre-populated. And you can see here, I'm setting the rate limit, not just on IP address, but specific request header data and even specific API tokens within the header, okay? So pretty powerful capability there with our rate limiting. Now, going back to our analy security analytics here, I'm gonna go to attack analysis. And again, I'm gonna just give us a little bit more data. So I'll say previous 30 days here. Now, looking at attack analysis here, we can see the breakdown of traffic patterns where traffic is classified in its attack, likely attack, likely clean, or clean. The VAF machine learning model looks at all incoming requests and generates effectively what's known as a WAF attack score, where a low score indicates the likeliness of an attack. We also have attack analysis on the right here where we can easily click and filter on any of the classifications uh, to be able, you know, or we can easily update the attack score here to filter in on uh, specific traffic. And you'll also notice here, we have a separate attack scores for specific attacks like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, and remote code execution. And we can also easily filter into any of these as well. Now, bringing everything together into the analytics view, we have the same capabilities for bot analysis where you can see if traffic is automated or likely automated and get a quick breakdown of the bot score source. Now, one of the most powerful features of analytics are the insights we provide. So users can jump right to what matters. Here, I'm gonna click uh, up on top here under insights, not mitigated requests scored as attack and you'll see we'll get back those results. And if I just scroll down here, what I can do is I can just open one of these up to get a, a better view of what's going on. And we can see here, this looks like a, you know definitely an attack, attack score of five, so pretty low attack score. And then it has an SQL injection score of six. So this is an SQL injection attack. You can see a lot of the data here, you can see the uh, with bot management, the score source with heuristics, 
and it gave it a bot, uh, bot score of one. You can see the IP address, the specific ASN, and all the details related to the request. I'm using Python, as I mentioned, so you can see the user agent is Python, and you can even see the query string uh, related to this uh, specific attack. Now, I'm going to remove all of that uh, filter. I'm going to come to events, and I'll just jump back to analytics real quick. The last item I want to cover here under analytics is our malicious uh, malware malicious content upload detection and analysis. So when enabled content scanning based on malicious signatures and heuristics will detect attempts to upload malicious content. So coming down here to our uh, uploaded content analysis, if I expand this, we can see there have been many attempts uh, here made and detected. And I'm just going to go ahead and filter on this and we'll get back all of those specific requests. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and expand one of these. And if I come down here, you'll see this says under malicious, you can see this has been flagged as malicious content or it's identified as malicious content. Now, the action taken depends on the WAF rule configuration that the user sets. So you can see here, customers get a lot of uh, visibility with security analytics, and we're going to continue building on this, adding additional visibility, for example, uh, exposed credential check detections, as Daniela mentioned earlier, where we look for any requests with username and password, we flag um, as auth request, and then we check if the credentials are compromised. And if compromised, we then show that in the UI, and then customers also able to set WAF policies, very similar to how the content scanning works, okay? Now, speaking of WAF, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to that. Looking at the WAF for a minute, we can see how customers can leverage some of these innovations like WAF attack score and content scanning within policies. So under custom rules here, you can uh, customers can create their own rules, again, based on many different request criteria and even Cloudflare specific data like WAF attack score signifying the likeliness of an attack or bot score signifying the likeliness of a bot or automated traffic. So for example here, uh, you may have situations where you want insights into if the automated traffic is malicious or not. So here I have a WAF rule. Uh, let me scroll down here. Here we go. I have a WAF rule uh, with both bot score and WAF attack score. And here you can see how many times this rule has been hit and click into it to get all the specific events. Now, if I click into this rule, we can take a deeper look here. Uh, you can see I'm looking at all requests with a, a WAF attack score of less than or equal to 50 and a bot score of less than 30. And that the action I'm taking is log, but of course you can also block or take some other type of action as desired. If I go back here, we'll, we can also look at the malicious content um, WAF policy I put in place. So we can see here there's a malicious content upload policy I created, and you can see how many times this has been hit as well. If I click into this, you can see this rule is configured to log if a malicious object is found. So I can also set it to block again, choose another action, but here I've just set it to go ahead and log so I can get that visibility. Now the content scanning is always on and always running and then you can, customers can choose the action. Now, if I wanna see all events the WAF took action on, that's where I can go to the events. And I can see here we have traffic that was logged, blocked and presented with a managed challenge where we dynamically choose the appropriate type of challenge based on the characteristics of the request. We've totally moved the way from CAPTCHAs, so try to minimize any kind of act interactivity there. And I can even filter on different request criteria here. So I can come up here, and since we're speaking about WAF attack score, I can even filter on WAF attack score. So here, I'll look at all requests that have that WAF, that WAF took action on with a WAF attack score of less than 50. And we can even go ahead and focus on a specific type of attack. So we're gonna do remote code execution here. And we'll just say less than or equal to, uh, less than or equal to a 50. And we can get those, uh, all that data back and results. And then we can look into it um, 
look into the specific uh, logs as well. Now, I covered prior when talking about Cloudflare rate limiting um, the innovation and integration with other Cloudflare products uh, like API Gateway. And this is very powerful because our WAF is well integrated with other Cloudflare products. And you can take advantage of it and operations are consistent regardless of where your workloads run, what clouds they were run on, or whether it's multi-cloud or even on-prem. So you've already seen the bot management integration with bot score, uh, but I wanna come here really quickly to bots. Um, this is our bot management analytics. And I just wanna show you how easily, um, you know, you can also leverage this with WAF. So here, for example, I can create a filter and just say bot score, let's say again, less than or equal to, uh, let's say here, let's just say here less than 30, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and apply it and we get back all that relevant data. And then if I want to, I can just go ahead and say create custom rule and it'll automatically pre-populate that for me. I can set whatever action I want and I can easily go ahead and create this, you know, WAF rule right from the bot management analytics, just to further show you that integration across WAF, bot management, API gateway. And again, you get that innovation regardless of where your workloads are running. That's unlike a lot of other vendors out there where you have to be on just their platform. Your workloads also have to be running on their platform, okay? So last thing, I uh, a few things I want to mention here um, to, to wrap up the demo is we're always trying to make it easier for our customers. So what I want to cover here is how Cloudflare is continuously trying to make things easier for our customers and operationally simple. So one additional enhancement we had here um, to support this is ASN and host name lists, a big request from customers. So here I already have, a, uh, for simplicity, um, I already have a tab open here where I just go to manage account, configuration, and uh, here you could see I have lists. And uh, here we can create a list of ASNs or host names. So you can see uh, I've already created a, a list of host names and ASMs. If I just edit this, you can see it's just a list of different host names. Now, if I go back, and again, I can do the same thing for ASN numbers. Now, if I go back to my WAF here, I can go to my rules. I can select create rule, and I can say, okay, um, let's use the host name list, for example. I can say host name where is in list, and then I can you can see there's three records in that list. I can select the list and I, I can choose my respective action. And this really simplifies adding host names and ASNs and WAF rules <clears throat> by allowing you to create easy to manage lists and then reuse them in different WAF and rate limiting policies, okay? Now, finally, at the account level, I'm gonna go back out of my specific, uh, you know, um, account there and go to all the account uh, domains I have in this account I'll go to uh, WAF here. So at the account level, we have this account WAF. So I, you can see I have at the account WAF level, I have this rule. I'm just gonna click edit. With account level WAF, Cloudflare allows you to easily create WAF rules and apply them across multiple, multiple domains uh, like you see here. You can see I have multiple domains where I can easily apply the same rules and I don't have to go to each separate um, uh, domain for that. Uh, again, what, another big request from customers. And similarly, if I go to security center with security analytics, account level security analytics, we give you the same view of all the detection capabilities and intelligence, but now expanded across all your domains, as you see here, multiple domains um, within that account, okay? So that's it for the demo. I'll go ahead and hand it back over to wrap up and for Q&A. Okay, Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, so I've, we had some questions coming in. So I'll, let me take uh, some of them. So 
There is there are few asking about a tax a tax score that they don't see a tax score on their platform. Um, so a tax score is uh, uh, included in all enterprise plans, but is not enabled by default. So you need to reach out to the account team, and we can enable it for you. Um, bot score. Um, there's also something you need to reach out to the account team if you don't have it on uh, on uh, on your plan. Um, but yeah, for a tax score, just reach out and we can uh, we can turn it up. There is a question about account level WAF and zone level WAF, which one runs first? Um, and I think um, for some of you, we have two versions of WAF. One is account and one is zone. And the zone, we mean like an individual application. The account version runs first. There is a question on sensitive data detection, or also I think the sensitive content filtration. We call it sensitive data detection. Um, if it works on the response, the answer is yes. Um, so that's a product that scans the, the body, the payload of the response, and we look for pattern of uh, PII sensitive data. So we look for uh, signatures of credit card numbers, social security number, um, uh, passports or secrets like API keys, for example. At the moment, it's a managed service, so we have a, a set of rules um, you can deploy, uh, but we manage those rules. In the future, we might allow customers to create their own logic. Uh, again, uh, another question about the level of plans, attack score for all enterprise, bot score uh, requires additional additional contract. Sorry, I'm, I'm sifting through. Um, the cloud for signature uh, lacks comprehensive details. Uh, when we ask for specific information uh, for a particular rule, we don't share them. Um, yes, I mean, this is intentional um, because we write and maintain the signatures. Our team of analysts create the signatures. If we release the signature and share the signatures, then they, they will likely become publicly available so attackers will know exactly what we are looking for and they will be able to circumvent, circumvent them. So the reason why we don't share them with you is not because um, there is some secret, but it's because we want to maintain the level of security high. And to do that, we need to prevent a public disclosure of those signatures. So usually uh, for who is not familiar with one, but you can go into the rule set and look for individual rules. There is a description. Um, we also, there are tags. So for example, we tell for what technology they're written and for what tag vector we look for. And perhaps if it's a CV, a known CV. But the signature itself, of course, this is something it's important to keep it like um, uh, not of public, public knowledge. There is a question uh, about um, specific in there. What about when a, a customer has an issue with the rules, rule because of something specific in the request? How can we identify the issue? I assume you're referring to like a false positive or if the manage rule uh, finds a match, how can you debug what has been found? And I think there was another similar question asking about when we will um, allow the same functionality for custom rules. So the, the answer is that we have a functionality which is called payload logging, matched payload logging, which is in the manage rule set. So whenever we match a rule, let's say an SQLI rule, and let's say we match in the body, then we will uh, log the body. 
all the headers, right? So you can go back and, and check where they, um, they were matched. That's only available for managed rule set. Of course, we're working to make it available also to custom rules and will possibly available uh, be available soon. Um, the, um, yeah, so if that's what you're referring to, look at payload login, something you need to enable when you deploy the managed rule set. And also any log we store is encrypted with a, a public key that is provided by the user, because of course we don't want to store any PII or sensitive data on our systems. Um, There is a question about forward proxy uh, um, traffic coming from forward proxy and being flagged as automated. If there is a way to figure out that, um, I'm not hundred percent sure exactly. I think I sh should look into the exact use case. Um, and I think we have a, a product manager for bots, uh, which is uh, his name is Adam. So I think maybe um, would be good to reach out to the account team and schedule some time with Adam and, and perhaps discuss the specific issue and use case. There is a comment regarding uh, um, uh, an outage we recently have, which is, um, uh, of course, something we uh, take very seriously. So um, it's about a uh, power outage that happened a few weeks ago. Um, you probably are, uh, I mean, we are, of course, taking steps to improve the current resilience of the entire Cloudflare system. So I think this has been, in a way, um, um, an opportunity for Cloudflare, of course, to improve. So um, we have already taken a few huge steps to get uh, this is the more resilient, so this is not, it's not going to happen again, of course. Can you make signatures for our own protection? Yes, you can create any signature you want. You can access um, the body of the request and so you can create um any you can match on any pattern or, or regex or signatures you can find in the body so you can create all custom uh logic you uh you you need um we you can access all parameters of the HTTP request so you can access the url query headers body so um yeah it's a uh, uh um, it's up to you exactly how you want to create a rule. Also, the, the rule uh, builder is based on um, Wireshark, Wireshark syntax, which is uh, uh, an industry standard. So this should be also fairly easy for, uh, for anyone in, uh, in your team to, to pick up and, and create a rule. How do we view the debug even the enterprise I can't enable payload logging all the time? Um, payload logging needs to be enabled when you deploy the rule set. So you go into, um, uh, you edit the rule set, the manage rule set, and then at the bottom there is um, a payload logging, uh, a payload logging link where you add your key and then you deploy it. And then the how to access it when you, when Omer was showing the uh, events, list of events, um, there for every log line, if we have a, a payload in it, then it's going to appear a, another link. Um, and the wording is going to be something like um, the crypt payload or the crypt, um, yeah, the crypt payload. And once you click there, you will see the body of the request or the headers. Um, again, it's something maybe you can follow up with your account team and, and uh, uh, take it offline. We can show you and provide a bit more documentation on that. Credentials, there is a question around credential stuffing, if we protect against that. Um, 
So uh, exposed credential check, the product I mentioned during the, uh, the slides, um, yeah, that's against credential stuffing attack. So we identify when exposed credentials are being used. So if you look at the analytics, you'll be able to see if there is an attack going on, right? So you'll see a spike in um, uh, in events that have been flagged with exposed credential. We also add a header to the request, so you can treat those requests differently on your service, on your backend, or you could block the request, of course, if you want, uh, if you want to be more aggressive. There's also another part of the request, the question, uh, blocking notification from distracting call personnel. I'm not sure what you mean by that. So a question about content scanning. Um, Basically, uh, there's a mention about a JavaScript that perhaps wasn't catched. Um, we use a third-party scanner, so one of the big provider of, if you want, of, of malware detection. Um, yeah, again, it's something we should we should look into. Um, I'm not sure. So if you can reach out to the account team and share uh, the exact. Um, file, then we can we can uh, we can take a look. Maybe take uh, Daniela like uh, one or two more, and we probably need to wrap it up. Yeah, we're running we're running out of time, so let me take the last one. Okay, the, this last one is how to eliminate false policy from WAP attack score. <laughs> um, that's a, that's a good one, I think, to, to wrap up. So one of the limitations of WAF attack score at the moment is that we don't provide payload logging. So we provide, we score the request, um, but there is no way for you to look at the request and see where and what part of the request contributed to the score. This is not a major issue, as far as I know, uh, when, when the score is very low because that's a very strong signal that there is an attack. But of course, it becomes more of a problem when the score is in the middle range, right? let's say above 10, between 10 and 60, 70. Um, we are, of course, working to extend the payload logging functionality to all features in the WAF, which includes custom rules and includes the attack score. So we hope sometime next year, um, uh, we will be able to add this functionality. So whenever we have a, a, an event with a low score, you will be able to go in and, and look at where exactly in the request we identify something that looks malicious. And so you could debug and possibly create rules to um, handle those exceptions. OK, I think. We are at time, so let's uh, let's close it here for today. So thank you very much for all the questions and, and for uh, joining us today for this session. Um, we are very happy to continue the conversation offline. So if you have any other questions, you can follow up and share them with your account team, and we can we can address them uh, later on. Um, yeah, and with that, thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. And see you at the next event. Bye.